popularity from coast to coast. The 49er season ticket sales reached an all-time high. Make sure you have a seat location during the 1957 season by writing for season ticket information. Address the San Francisco 49ers Football Club, San Francisco, California. As the season started, the National Football League experts felt that with a 4-8 record in 1955, young head coach Frankie Albert, with not too much added player personnel, would be a second division contender. But with the same daring that made him a feared player in collegiate and professional ranks, Albert predicted that his club's first-year efforts would result in at least an even break in the win-loss column. Here you see the rookie from Michigan State, Earl Morrill, helping the 49ers along. Another rookie sensation from COP, Clyde Connor, the veteran offensive tackle, Bob St. Clair. And the all-around halfback, Joe Arenas. In the coaching ranks, the Chiefs got an assistant coach, Joe Vitrano. The player coach, Billy Johnson. The efficient, Mark Duncan. The determined, Red Hickey. The affable Phil Bankston, and last but not least, the head coach, Frankie Albert, the all-time great quarterback. During the six-game pre-conference schedule against the likes of the Browns, the Giants, and the Rams, the 49ers come into their first league game with a 3-3 record. Here you see head coach Jim Lee Howell with some of his stars. Ken McAfee. The great quarterback, Don Heinrich. Bob Schnelker. From the Southwest Conference, Kyle Rhodes. And the All-Pro Player of the Year, Frank Gifford. The New York Giants, one of the stronger teams in the Eastern Division of the NFL, further strengthened their teams for the 1956 campaign with trades and draft choices in hopes of a championship year and to regain for them the glory they had in years gone by. As they go into the regular league play, they had but one non-conference loss. We're favored in this opening game against San Francisco. In the first quarter, it's Don Henry firing a perfect pass to Alex Webster for 43 yards and a New York touchdown. They give the Giants a 7 to nothing lead on the Bergie scoreboard. The Giants extended their lead as the all-pro player, Frank Gifford, slants off right tackle. He races 59 yards to another New York touchdown. To make the score, the New York Giants, 14. The 49ers, nothing. The Giants added a field goal later. And then quarterback Don Heinrich connected with Mal Triplett on a pass over the middle to extend the Giants' lead. As the Bergie scoreboard shows it, it's 49ers nothing, the New York Giants 24. Endeavoring to get back into the ball game, Joe Perry of the 49ers drives up the middle for five yards. This time, Y.A. Tittle passes over the middle to Joe Arenas for 14 more yards. With the aid of a key block by Lou Palatella, Hugh McElhaney takes a double handoff, circles right in, he goes for 16 yards, and a 49er touchdown. The Bergie scoreboard shows that New York Giants 24, San Francisco 7. In the third quarter, Tittle connected with Billy Wilson for 13 yards, a first down on the Giants' 16-yard line. This time, Y.A. Tittle hits Gordy Soltar with a pass for 15 more yards, deep into the New York Giant territory. And on a favorite 49er play, Tittle rolls out to his right and fires a perfect pass to Billy Wilson for a touchdown to make the score of the Giants 31, San Francisco 14. In the fourth quarter, Hugh McElhinney roars up the middle. He goes for 13 yards to move the ball into giant territory. With the aid of a key block by Joe Arenas, Joe Perry takes a pitch out from Tittle and cuts inside right end for seven yards. The 49ers move closer to the giant goal when Tittle fired a bullet pass to Joe Arenas for 11 more yards. 
With the aid of a bone-rattling block in this one by Bob St. Clair, Hugh McElhinney circles left end for the final 49er TD. The Giants scored again later, and the final score was New York 38, San Francisco 21. The Giants went on from here to become the 1956 world champions. When the Rams and 49ers meet on the football field, it's always the renewal of one of football's most intense rivalries. Here you see head coach Sid Gilman, along with some of his great stars. Tank Younger, the great fullback, and an equally great offensive end, Bob Boyd. The quarterback that's done a lot for the Rams, Van Brocklin. A halfback that wrecks havoc with the 49ers, Ronnie Waller. And one of the great all-time offensive running ends, Elroy Hirsch. To start the action early in the first quarter, we find the Tank Younger is ready to roll after this field goal attempt and conversion by Gordy Solta of the San Francisco 49ers to give the 49ers an early lead. Here's the play. Van Brocklin back to Tank Younger, and up the middle he goes for 33 yards before he's tackled by Paul Carr. This time, quarterback Billy White connects with Elroy Hirsch on a bullet pass for 18 yards. With the Rams unleashing their vaunted passing attack, the rookie from USC, Leon Clark, takes a weight pass for 12 yards before Diggy Magel brings him down. And with beautiful faking, Billy White bootlegs to his right, goes into the end zone for a Ram TD. The Berge scoreboard shows it, Ram 7, the 49ers 3. With the aid of a good block by Beatty, Hugh McElhenney skirts left end for 13 yards to move the ball into Ram territory. After three plays failed, Gordy Soltor kicked another field goal to make the Burgermeister scoreboard read Ram 7, the 49ers 6. We pick up the action again as Joe Perry goes through a big hole opened up by St. Clair for seven yards. After a penalty set the 49ers back, Soltor kicks still another field goal to give the 49ers a 9 to 7 lead. Soldog kicks off to Skeets Quinlan of the Rams on the 10-yard line. But Quinlan fumbles when tackled by Paul Goad. The ball is recovered by the 49ers on the Ram 26-yard line. Now the 49ers on a double reverse. Hugh McElhinney streaks around the left side, goes for 10 yards to the Rams 16-yard line. And again, after three plays failed, it's the magic toe of Gordy Saltor kicking his fourth consecutive field goal. And that extends the 49ers' lead to 12-7. To With time running out of the first half, Wade throws a beautiful pass to Tank Younger for 42 yards before Mangle brings him down on a six-yard line. Failing to move the ball, Les Richter kicks a field goal. And that narrows the gap to 12-10 to in favor of San Francisco. In the third quarter, Billy Wade threw a sideline pass to Elroy Hirsch in the right flat, good for 11 yards. The Rams went in front on this play as Wade fired to Boyd. The Rams speedster goes all the way to give Los Angeles a 16 to 12 lead on the Fergie scoreboard. The 49ers came right back, however. Hugh McElhinney picks up seven yards and a slant off right tackle. Now watch this play with tremendous blocking in the 49er forward wall. Joe the Jet Perry finds a big hole, races up the middle, 28 yards to a San Francisco TD. The Berge scoreboard shows San Francisco 19, the Rams 16. Took over the ball and Billy Wade passed to Elroy Hirsch in the left flat for 16 yards. Elroy Hirsch is considered as one of the all-time National Football League greats. And here you can see why. He takes a Billy Wade pass and races all the way for a 43-yard touchdown. They give the Rams a 23-19 lead on the Burgermeister scoreboard. And you can see why they call him Crazy Legs as he comes right on into the camera. Fires a flat pass intended for Ronnie Miller. However, watch it. It's intercepted by George Medeiros. 
Apple laterals to Captain Rex Berry as the 49ers take over the ball in Ram territory. The 49ers hit pay dirt on this one. Hugh McElhinney goes up in the air and over for a TD. They give the 49ers a 26-23 to 23 lead. With the 49ers displaying a savage defense, Billy Wade was swarmed under as he attempted to pass. He fumbled with the ball recovered by Ed Beatty on the Ram 14-yard line. John Henry Johnson now gets the call, and he fights his way up the middle for four yards. This time, Y.A. Tittle sends McClenney around right end. He picks up three yards. Again, John Henry Johnson gets the call. Driving closer, powering his way into right tackle. Another three-yard gain. McLenny dives over right guard for the final 49er touchdown of the day. The Rams scored later, and the final score, 49ers 33, Rams 30. scoreboard shows it, San Francisco 7, and the Detroit Lions 7. With Earl Morrill at quarterback, the former Michigan State star passes to John Henry Johnson, who threads his way for 11 yards. Gordy Soltog kicks a field goal from the 30-yard line. They give San Francisco a 10-7 lead. The Lions added a field goal later to tie the score. And then Bobby Lane passes to Jimmy Dorn for 17 yards to move the ball deep into 49er territory. This time, big Leon Hart fights his way off left tackle for three more yards. On a fourth down play, Leon Hart hammers his way into the end zone to give the Lions a 17 to 10 lead. The 49ers come right back. Quarterback Earl Morrill passes short to John Henry Johnson, who cuts back for eight yards. And again, on fourth down, Gordy Soltoff adds a field goal, this time from 40 yards to narrow the gap to Lions 17, San Francisco 13. Fourth quarter, Morrill passed to Hugh McElhenney, who raced around the right side for 15 yards. With the aid of a good 
blocked by St. Clair. Johnson takes a pitch out, cuts inside right end for seven yards. And this time, John Henry Johnson dives over the middle for what would have been the winning touchdown, but the 49ers were offside, and the play was called back. The 49er hopes faded away as Johnson takes a pitch out from Tittle, but Gene Cronin smothers him for a seven-yard loss to end the 49er chances for a victory. The game ended a few moments later with a final score, the Lions 17, the 49ers 13. The Green Bay Packers, one of pro football's oldest and most feared teams, had their ups and downs during the 1956 season. But as they come to San Francisco, they're riding high with upset wins over the league-leading Detroit Lions and the Chicago Cardinals. Here are some of the Packer performers. Gary Knafel, a great end, along with an equally great end in Billy Houghton. A quarterback that can throw them a mile, Tobin Roth. The all-around halfback, offense and defense, Al Carmichael. The little fullback, Fred Cohen, who can catch them knee-high to the grasshopper and then go all the way. And a great fullback in Howie Ferguson. While the Packers have resumed winning ways, well, so have the 49ers. As they return to Kizar Stadium in San Francisco from their eastern trip, they've won two games and tied one. A large crowd of Northern California fans turn out to cheer the team on. We start the action in the first quarter as Tittle passes to Clyde Connor in the left flat, good for six yards. This time, Y.A. hands off to Joe the Jet Perry, who drives for four more yards. The 49ers dented the scoreboard early. Hugh McElhinney cuts over left guard and races 25 yards to score standing up. They give the 49ers a 7 to nothing lead. The Packers come right back, however. Tobin Roth, passed to Billy Houghton in the right flat. The elusive Packer end reverses his field and then streaks for 27 yards. Now watch this one. On a beautiful play, Tobin Roth fires a short pass to Fred Cohn. The Packer back races 69 yards up the sideline to tie the score at 7-7. Seven to seven. added a field goal later, and as we pick up the action in the second quarter, Rode passes to Joe Johnson in the right flat for 13 yards. This time, Tobin Rode connects with Billy Houghton, right over the middle, good for 15 yards. And with fourth down and a yard to go, Tobin Rode plunges over right tackle for another Green Bay TD, and that gives the Packers on the Berkey scoreboard a 14 to 10 lead. After the kickoff, Y.A. Tittle drops back and hits Billy Wilson on a pass good for nine yards. Again, Tittle drops back. This time, the pass goes to Clyde Connor. The rookie picks up 21 yards. Mixing his tack well, Tittle hands off to Hugh McElhinney. He slants off right tackle, picks up four yards. Point accuracy, Tittle teams up with rookie Clyde Connor on a pass in the end zone. They give the 49ers a 17 to 14 lead. In the fourth quarter, Y.A. Tittle of the 49ers fires a pass to Clyde Connor that goes for a good 30 yards. Clyde Connor was considered to be one of the rookie finds of the year. Here, he takes a pass from Tittle, spins away from Bobby Dillon, a great defensive halfback, and then races for 45 yards before Ken Gargle pushes him out of bounds on the Packers' six-yard line. The 49ers hit Pater on this play. Tittle bootlegs to his right, fires to Billy Wilson, who is all alone in the end zone for another TD to make the score San Francisco 24 and the Green Bay Packers 14.
the 49er defensive unit was largely responsible for their success during the latter part of the 1956 season. Here, Dickie Magel steals a road pass and waves his way beautifully for 31 yards and another 49er TD. The Burger scoreboard shows it 31 to 14 in favor of San Francisco. Later in the quarter, Tittle rifled a pass to Billy Wilson, good for 11 yards. Displaying the form that has made him the most feared one of the National League, Hugh McElhinney takes the pitch out, races around and through and down for 50 yards before he has finally shoved out of bounds on the three-yard line. Joe Perry caps the 49ers scoring for the day by going off left tackle for another TD. The final score, the San Francisco 49ers 38, Green Bay 20. Burgermeister, Burgermeister. Passing sensation, Johnny Unitas. Although he suited up for the game, George Shaw, number 14, didn't see action in this ball game. Some of the other stars for the Baltimore Colts, Burt Retchichar, a great defensive end, Gino Marchetti from San Francisco, Alan the Horse Amici, a tremendous offensive fullback, and one of the all-time defensive tackles, Art Donovan, and a great end in Mutscheller. By defeating the Colts, the 49ers can make good Coach Frankie Albert's preseason prediction of an even-up season. However, the Colts are not the type to roll over and play dead for anybody. In fact, they start out by putting the 49ers in the hole. Sensational Rookie of the Year, Lenny Moore, has been bothering NFL defensive teams all season long. And here you see him in action in the first quarter as he swings around left hand and goes all the way to give the Colts a set to nothing lead. With key blocks by Ted Connolly and Billy Wilson, Joe Perry goes through a right tackle for 30 yards before Jesse Thomas brings him down. This time, Y.A. Tittle connects with Clyde Connor, who was brought down on a vicious tackle by Burt Ruchichar. With Morris and Connolly opening the hole, Hugh McElhoney streaks up the middle for 10 yards. Then Joe Perry takes the handoff from Tittle. He powers his way for six more yards. And on a third down play, Y.A. Tittle dives over the middle for a 49er TD to tie the score at 7-7. Seven seven. In the third quarter, Burt Ratchichar boots a tremendous 43-yard field goal to send Baltimore into a 10-7 lead. And now watch this play. Joe Arenas, considered to be one of the most valuable players in the National League, being outstanding on either offense or defense. And here he takes the ensuing cold kickoff. With the aid of a block by Ed Hinkey at midfield, he races 96 yards before stumbling on the two-yard line. Stiffen and stopped Joe Perry for no gain on a thrusted right tackle. After two more plays failed, Gordy Soltar kicks a field goal to tie it up at 10 to 10 on the Berkey scoreboard. off to Alan Lahorse Amici who finds the hole and goes for seven hard yards. And Baltimore takes the lead on this play. Johnny Unitas fires a perfect pass to Ray Berry in the end zone. And the Colts lead, 17 to 10. The 49ers came right back as Tittle teamed up in a long pass with Clyde Connor who makes a beautiful catch. It moves the ball to the three-yard line. On the 
the first play of the fourth quarter. Tittle dives over for the TD. And that makes the score 17 all. One of the 49er defensive standouts was Leo the Lion Nomalini. And here he drags down Johnny Unitas for a four yard loss. And keep your eye on this play as Roger Jar punts to Joe Arenas. And again, with the aid of key blocks by McElhoney, Bosley, and Sheriff, Arenas electrifies the crowd with a 67 yard rock to a TD. Johnson pounds up the middle for three yards. The 49ers wind up the scoring for the day as Tittle bootlegged to his right and fires a perfect pass to Billy Wilson to make the final score 49ers 30, Baltimore 17. And so the 49ers make good on Coach Frankie Albert's preseason prediction, finishing the year in a surprising third place in the Western Division. And with returning service veterans, plus a good choice of rookies in the recent draft led by All-American John Brody, and standout veterans of the 1956 season, it appears that the 49ers will be a title contender for 1957. To help in the battle for the championship will be these dependable veterans. Bob Tonop, the great offensive-defensive tackle. Tackle John Gonzaga. Defensive halfbacks Bob Holliday, J.D. Smith, Tommy McCormick. Offensive ends Fred Sagely and Billy Jessup. And here's John Henry Johnson. Let's watch him in action. See his tremendous fighting spirit. Joe the Jet Perry, who in 1957 has to gain but 524 yards to become the all-time individual rusher as far as individual statistics are concerned in the NFL. And a great quarterback, Y.A. Tittle, teaming up with a great end in Billy Wilson. And what we think is one of the plays of the year in NFL competition. Sportscaster Roy Story saying so long for now.